morning, everyone. So it is um, Saturday, October 22nd. We're getting very close now. Normally on Saturdays, you catch me in PJs with my tea. Today's feeling a little bit better dressed. I'm, uh, though I haven't gotten to my hair yet, <laughs> I'm off to an event in Blue Hill immediately after we finish up today. So for those of you who haven't joined for a, uh, any of the town hall style events that we have, the way that it works is you put your questions, comments, concerns right in the chat, just like if you were grabbing the microphone or passing up a note card at a town hall. Um, I usually start off talking about something that's been going on during the week. Um, and uh, Saturdays tend to be a little bit more casual than Tuesdays, um, usually because I'm just looking up. <laughs> uh, so if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please drop them in the chat. I'm happy to talk about it. So this week, oh my goodness, this week was a very busy week. Um, so I, oh, I'm headed to Blue Hill today. On Thursday, I was up in Presque Isle. On um, Wednesday, I was at the Lewiston Auburn Chamber of Commerce event. And one of the things I want to talk to you a little bit about today is events. And if they are any reflection of voter turnout, not only is voter turnout probably going to be really low, but that gives us a great opportunity to push this campaign forward. Um, so the event I was at in Lewiston, Auburn, there was, uh, gosh, probably, I think there were 19 tables with candidates, then there was staff, and then there were maybe five or 10 people in the audience that had come. And I've seen that at a lot of events and it's multi-candidate events that usually, um, you know, in the pandemic and the before, before the times, so before the pandemic, these events used to regularly draw, you know, 50 to 200 people. Um, the pandemic canceled a lot of events, but something else has been a problem too. So it started in 2018 towards the tail end of the race when um, Jared Golden decided he didn't want to show up to debate. It really perpetuated in 2020 with Sarah Gideon. And it's not just the Democrats, the Republicans are doing it too. But when both teams sort of opt out of all of the citizen and community events where people get to know candidates and instead decide, hey, we're going to rely on fundraising and then we can pay for commercials and flyers and mailers that give us a curated message and then we don't have to face open-ended questions voters or the competition and that has really escalated in the past few years and that is very concerning to me kind of it got caught up in the pandemic where at first it was understandable but it was actually happening before the pandemic so um I, I don't count 2020 as a real run. I could I was unable to make ballot because I followed pandemic restrictions. Um, I did have over 3,000 of the 4,000 signatures necessary. I just couldn't get the last thousand. And I had those 3,000 signatures. So I had more than double the signatures. I had over 2,000. I ended up with over 3,000. So I needed four. And halfway through the period was, the collection period was when the pandemic kind of shut everything down. Uh, and I had more than half the signatures I needed more than halfway through. So I should have been able to complete that. I didn't, whatever it happens. Um, I personally cannot control a pandemic, but before that there were forums and candidates and, uh, you know, were participating in, and those started getting canceled, canceled because the most moneyed candidates were not participating. And um, so a lot of the, the group organizers Group organizers didn't see a reason to hold those forums. And that is a huge problem. Um, and again, it's not just Democrats, it's Republicans too. Um, Republicans started opting out a couple of years earlier. Um, there was a time a few years ago where not showing up to debate was just horrific. That would, that would not at all be acceptable. But here we are this year, there were four debates scheduled for this race. I RSVP'd yes to all four of them. In fact, they were still trying to put on one of them. Um, I, just a couple days ago, I got an email finally saying they give up on scheduling, but I'd given that one probably a dozen different dates that I could be available, dates and times. I had to secure childcare each time. So it's it's not like this is at no expense for me to, to do that. I, it's certainly at least at the expense of time and resources. Um, and I was the only one who showed up to the first debate. 
um, the second debate we all showed up to, and then the next two got canceled. And what that effectively does is it takes away all the free um, opportunities for people who are running, and it protects candidates that maybe are not great candidates. Bruce Pelican and Jared Golden, they're not good candidates. They've both had a chance at um, at doing the job. Neither one has done a great job with it. We we saw the, the debate that I was in with them. They don't really have great policy ideas in a lot of places, um, and they don't really defend their policy ideas well. And um, it allows them to just say, you know what, I'll just buy my coverage. I, I don't have to participate in any of the news. I don't have to participate in community groups. I don't have to participate in, uh, in any organizational groups. I don't have to be there to meet people. I'll just pay so much money on the airwaves that I can curate the message. You get exactly what I want you to hear and I don't have to face anything else. And that's my version of democracy. That's not democracy and that's not how it should work. Um, and I saw it again on Thursday. I mean, I drove, I actually, my kids got a get out of jail free card and they got to skip school on Thursday because I, I took them up to the county with me. <coughs> Excuse me, if on that day I was unable to find childcare that would be able to be available till, you know, two in the morning or whatever I was able to get home. So, uh, you know, we wandered up, we got to take pictures of Mac Todd and we, we went up and the event we went for was um, Presque Isle High School, although it was held at the middle school. They have a, a very nice facility up there, but Presque Isle High School, uh, their sophomore class um, was learning about democracy and they had to interview a bunch of different candidates. I think there was Oh, six maybe it was either six or seven of us there for different races. They needed to bring a voter or somebody who could be registered to vote. There was a reception after. It was a truly lovely event. That is the sort of event that candidates should go to if there's any way that they can. Um, and you don't go to those events for votes, although I'm sure you do pick some up from being there. You you go to those those events because those are children learning about the system, and they're children who are very close to becoming adults learning how our democracy works and how to participate. And when you opt out of events like that, you know, you are telling our future that they don't need to bother and that's not okay. And so I was, I was the only congressional candidate there. The gubernatorial candidates weren't there. Uh, oh, actually Sam Hunkler was there. So Sam was there as well. He's an independent. Um, and then there were some local legislators and, and aspiring legislators there. So, um, so yeah, it was six of us. And, um, you know, it, from all appearances, it looked as if you know, Jared Golden was actually very close geographically. He just didn't attend. So um, it, it is it is frustrating for me as not just a candidate, but as a voter to watch this this really drastic, ugly shift from both parties away from participating in public forums and feeling like they need to have conversations with voters and be engaged with voters and shifting away from that to events that are tightly managed, that usually don't have open-ended questions. They have a speech and then maybe one or two questions that are allowed. And if the questions are not great, it's, oops, oh, sorry, we gotta go to the next event. Um, I noticed this when I was at uh, the Bangor Rotary. I was like, I'll just do all questions. What do you guys wanna hear? And it was sort of surprising to a lot of people in the audience that I was able to answer all their questions. And one of the things I heard was, you know, if you keep it a little shorter, we never get a, a chance to ask real questions. So I did. I, I, I kept it nice and short. And I just basically said, I'm Tiffany, ask me questions. Um, we don't have these forums for folks anymore. And I've I've given the digital town hall format so that people can come on. And we've had a few people come on since I've started talking. So if you are new to these and you've just come in, um, drop something in the chat. If you have questions, comments, concerns, I'll interrupt what I'm talking about or weave it into what I'm talking about. Um, but we we, ha we have a democracy right now that isn't very democracy-y. I mean, we have, we have both major parties in their own ways starting to opt out of these events. And it's, it's not acceptable. It's not acceptable to cancel debates. It's not acceptable to skip out on community forums. You know, you're not going to be able to attend everyone. My schedule is is nuts. I, I have so many things that I'm doing. I'm campaigning pretty much every evening at different events. I don't, um, I have a lot of people that are like, 
oh, you don't have any campaign events. I have a ton of campaign events. I'm just Gen X. And our internet safety was you don't necessarily publish a really long time in advance where you are. Um, I usually let the event providers, you know, put them out. I'll send out feelers to groups that I know, or not feelers, uh, notifications to groups that I know are geographically in the area. Um, as a female candidate, I get a little bit more threatening comments probably than the male candidates do. So I do have to be careful about publishing my schedule in advance, but I'm in events. I'm campaigning every night, um, often at events, sometimes knocking doors, sometimes sending out postcards or mailers. Um, so I don't have any campaign mailers that are professionally printed, glossy, slick ones. I hand write notes to voters and sometimes postcards. I usually do note cards just because then I can slide my business card in there. Um, and it is hard to hit all the events, but there is just this growing trend of opting out. Um, and it's it's not just impacting independent candidates. I've had a few people roll their eyes at me and be like, oh yeah, well, independence. It's not just independence. And we saw this happen. It happened in the race in 2018. I was in with Jared Golden. It happened in the, the race that I was wanting to be in, but was not successful because of the pandemic in um, getting on the ballot in 2020. So in 2018, there were five candidates in the um, the Democratic primary. Bruce Pollockin was an incumbent. He didn't have a challenger. Um, Jared Golden was sort of dropped in with a, a, a very large amount of money. And um, I know the other candidates, one was quite public about it. The others were, you know, candidates. We mostly get along. A lot of us talk to each other. Uh, we see each other at events. So we are generally pretty friendly with each other. Um, all of the resources turned off. It was like, a, you know, one of them described it as a garden hose just getting shut off like the spigot was gone. There was nothing. It was a drip or two. All of the resources, all of the support. And it was just very clear who was going to get the resources in the race. And it was noticeable inside the race in 2018. In 2020, it was horrifyingly obvious. There were <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm not having my tea yet. There were three candidates in the race. Sarah Gideon was dropped in with just a ton of endorsements, millions of dollars, and just everybody was essentially, all the events were canceled that were multi-candidates events. There were very few left remaining. The field was cleared and everybody else was told, you know, take your cupcakes and go home. Thanks for playing. We're not interested in you, in you running in this race. And that's not democracy that is that is candidates being selected by large donors and that is not what we should be looking for so um kind of a peculiar time in the cycle to talk about it but i i found it very bothersome this week that we had multiple events that i should not have been the only congressional candidate at but i was and Again, it's not just me as a candidate that that is uh, bothersome to. I can reach out to voters either way. I can find ways around that. I have wonderful volunteers that are helping me write postcards. If you would like to help write postcards, please send me a message. I have um, a wonderful volunteers that are knocking on doors, that are getting out to their friends and family, and that's terrific. I'm I'm I I have a pr I have. I'm closing in on 200 volunteers now. We have a pretty good volunteer force that, again, I don't talk about all that often because our volunteers, I, I try uh, not to be burdensome. So a lot of volunteers are just, you know, five, 10 minutes a week. Some are a little bit more because I think volunteering should be volunteering. It shouldn't be like a second job. Second job for me because I'm running. <laughs> um, but the problem is we don't have a democracy driven by people and it's the money. It's 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 pretty gross the way that it's going. So that has really bothered me as a candidate. It really bothered me this week. It really bothered me that voters don't have access to candidates pretty much at all anymore, any of the, the big name moneyed candidates. And, it, you know, it, it really discourages participation. It's I think it's really going to drive down voter participation in these midterms. It's... Um, it's frustrating. It's, it's it's just not what we should have. If if this is a job interview, to select the person most qualified to do this job and really care about us and make sure 
that they're diligently paying attention to the needs of the community and the community can't get to them. So as a voter, I find that really frustrating. I'm also heartbroken on behalf of a lot of these groups. Um, in 2018, when I ran, there was, you know, there was a forum put on by uh, a group that was very concerned with healthcare concerns. There were some environmental groups, you know, um, groups really had the opportunity to have their concerns heard and let their members ask questions of candidates. And that those opportunities aren't there anymore for those groups. And there were things that could be done without it being, you know, considered a pack or without it being considered really political activity because they could invite everybody and that way it was nonpartisan and anybody could ask questions. So it wasn't really a political activity in the way that, you know, a lot of groups lobby. It was it was something that a lot more nonprofits can can participate in. It's something that like chambers of commerce can participate in. And um, those are just gone. So, um, or they're dying if they're not gone. And that's, makes me so sad as a voter. Um, and so sad for those groups that they don't have that opportunity to link people up with their elected leaders. Um, elected leaders now only want to talk to them once they're already elected, um, if they want to talk at all. I mean, they may want to do only the talking, they don't want to do the, the question and answers. So uh, we've had a few more people come and go. If you have any questions, please drop them in the chat. I'm happy to answer them. Our Saturday mornings don't usually get a whole lot of questions. It's early <laughs> and it's been getting dark earlier and it's a little chilly. So um, you're probably about as awake as I am, but I'll be chugging a few teas to go to um, Blue Hill today. I'll put on um, kind of the details of the event if you would like to attend. Um, yeah, so I, I have that. I have a few private type events and I also promised my kids I'd take them to a candy store on the way back from Blue Hill. They're gonna be headed up there with me today. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, I'll have a town hall on Tuesday. I haven't decided the topic yet, but you can help me craft that. I also, um, I will probably not have a breakfast with Tiffany next Saturday. I'm gonna try, but I think I have a hunter breakfast coming up maybe. There's something very, very very early next weekend that I've um, committed to attend. So uh, if I get done and I'm still conscious after, then I will do one of these. But if I, I'm going to go hang out in my car and take a nap, I will not do one of these. Um, otherwise, find me online. If you want to write some postcards, let me know. If you want to um, help in other ways, get in touch with me. Another couple of people just joined. So if you have questions, I'll talk for another minute. If you want to drop them in, I'm happy to answer those. Um, but yeah, we, we do have a lot of stuff coming up. We're in the last few weeks here, last couple of weeks almost, um, less than three weeks left and we will find out. And one way or the other, I'm going to get to sleep in on Saturday very soon. Um, yeah, so I'm going to dash off so I can head to Blue Hill. I don't want to be late to that event. And I will see you Tuesday. If you need anything else in the meantime, come find me on Twitter or send me an email. Please tell friends uh, because we are getting so close. If you are in Maine or even if you're not, now is a really good time to do Maine raising. It's a great time to, to get ahead on holiday shopping. You know, buy two, three things from different Maine vendors. Leave them a note. Tell them to look me up. That makes a huge difference. And that really creates advocates um, of the campaign because when's the last time anybody in politics really truly directly helped you so um, have a great day and i will see you online or in person soon